Open the door for me. <laughs> Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your promotion bringing you guys another video before we start the video I want to remind some of you guys that are newer to the channel guys We have a massive giveaway that we're doing on the channel you guys can actually earn a chance to win up to 11,200 V bucks. That's what me and casual pro were actually hosting a giveaway So all you have to do is give this video a thumbs up go down in the link description and enter through the link again It's free so why not give it a try subscribe to casual pro through that link and subscribe to our Twitters That's all you basically have to do It's very easy and you have a chance to earn some free V bucks and that means you can get some free skin and you guys already know this new skin dropped it looks sexy so you got to try it out but without further ado let's get into the video so in today's video we're going to cover the top 10 tips that i have for you guys within sniping now sniping is a huge part of fortnite battle royale especially when you're playing solos you guys in squads as well but solos if you want to get a win you have to at least be a decent sniper but squads it can help take out an enemy so that way your team can push up so snipers are very crucial within the game and in today's video i'm going to give you guys the best tips that i can in order to make you one of the top tier snipers Starting off with number one, ghost sniping. Guys, ghost sniping is so big. If you don't know how to do it, you need to learn how to do it. And in today's video, I'm actually going to teach you quickly how to ghost snipe. So basically what ghost sniping is, is what I'm doing in this clip here. I'm hiding behind the blue part of my wall. And then the second I have my shot lined up, I peek it. And then I, I stand up and I take my shot. The reason this is so crucial is because you can see them and they can't see you. So you, Or they can see you, but they cannot shoot you. So even if you're standing there behind your blue wall and they shoot through that, you're not going to get hit. So that way you can actually line up your shot. You can check out to see what the enemy's doing and then whenever they're open and you're ready Don't hesitate peek take your shot and kill them This is actually one of the tips that the pros use and they actually do so this is actually starting off with tip number one is a pro tip You guys it's huge and it takes some skill. It's definitely viable. It's everything that pros do It's a good part of the game and now for number two Which weapon is the best sniper now this step is of course a beginner step But I have to cover it in the video because not everyone knows it So we're talking about which sniper is the best we have all these different colors and then we also have the semi-auto and then the bolt action sniper rifles So I'm gonna just say now all bolt action snipers are better than the semi-autos Now the semi-autos do have its ups and downs and what they're good for But the bolt action is the sniper that you want to use even if you have a gold Semi-auto sniper in front of you and a blue bolt pick up the blue bolt because if you can headshot somebody with that You can instantly kill them But if you headshot somebody with a gold and they have full health full shield you can't instantly kill them So my suggestion is always pick up the bolt you always want one bullet to kill the person and that's all it takes now with that being said we're going to cover the colorways within the bolt action of course starting off with blue being the worst bolt action sniper rifle and then we have the purple and then we have the gold being the top tier legendary sniper that everyone wants to find now we're about to cover number three guys number three is big you want to go for headshots i know headshots can be hard in the game because it is a smaller target and if you go up a little too high you're gonna miss but if you go for a body and you go up too high you'll get a headshot so i know the headshot will be a little bit harder to aim for but if you can actually hit the headshot it's a sweet victory because you're knocking the person guaranteed even if they have 100 100 health 100 shield as long as you get that headshot and you get that critical in the head and the nice little ding noise you're gonna knock that person now the reason this is good is because of in solos of course if you if you see a team or you see a base in solos and you see the person in it and you go for the shot and you only tag him up he can easily heal up and then you gotta sit there and try and take down 100 health 100 shield again now in squads or duos, the reason it's really good to go for the headshots is because once you knock that person, their teammates, one, have a disadvantage with the numbers, or two, they have to go and try and heal that person so you have a chance to push up with your team. And that brings us into step number four, always having a good sniper on the team. Now this is good in squads and duos because when you have teammates pushing up, the enemy team is going to be focusing on the kids pushing up. They're going to be shooting the people's stairs that are pushing up, so they're going to have their heads peaked up at all times. So when their heads are peaked up and they're shooting your teammates that's your perfect chance to hit a person that's not moving because they're one focused on your teammates pushing up because they're nervous they don't want them to get pushed on and two it's just an open shot man they're just in the open ready to just get shot so once you snipe them you're gonna knock them down and it's going to allow your teammates to actually push up with the the numbers on the enemy and it'll be a lot easier for your team because the enemy's gonna start freaking out because one of their players went down or or one of their players just lost 180 health and shield instantly so they're gonna be nervous now for step number five you guys this one is big it's switching your weapon watch the gameplay in the background right now 
As you guys can see, I got a body shot on him and then I switched to my assault rifle. The reason I switched to my assault rifle is because instantly after I got that body shot, I knew he was like two tap and then he was dead. So I thought, okay, you know what? Let me just switch to my AR and finish it off like that. A lot of people think that once they get a snipe shot, they can sit there and reload their sniper and try and shoot him again. No, you're not gonna have time. You have to quickly react. Once you get the body shot, react as quick as you can to switch to your AR and just try to shoot them and try and like two piece them. Cause I'm telling you, they're gonna be like one or two bullets and they're dead. So you can instantly kill them very quick. So that's a big tip that I wanna tell you guys is knowing when to switch your weapon. It's also a good idea to do that. But with that being said, we're gonna cover the next step, which is kind of similar. It's knowing when to snipe and when not to snipe. Now this one is big because a lot of people will sit there and try and snipe somebody that's running up right up in their face. And sometimes it's not the best idea. If the person is running up on you and you have a good assault rifle, it sometimes might be a good idea to switch to your AR and just shoot them with your AR rather than trying to snipe them. And then other times, a lot of the times people will be across the map and people will try to shoot them with an AR and they're not moving. That's where you also gotta know, hey, if the kid's not moving, I gotta take the chance, I gotta shoot with my sniper so that way I can instantly kill him and make things easier for me. Now with that being said, another time to use a sniper, a good time, is when you're super weak. Like say you're in a 1v1 situation and the dude is above you or he's lighting you up and you have like five health or something like that. Your health is super weak and you're only one shot. The only chance you have of winning that gunfight is if you switch to a sniper and you instantly kill them. Because if you have an AR and you peek and try and keep shooting them and they have 100 health, 100 shield, you're gonna peek yourself way too many times for him to be able to get actually one bullet into you. So my suggestion is, of course, instead of switching to your AR and trying to shoot him with you being one shot, switch to your sniper. Hope you can take a good sniper shot and kill him instantly. Now for step number seven, you guys, this one is big. It's trusting your instinct. I know a lot of you guys are like, wait, what kind of a tip is that? But it's true. You have to trust yourself and not think too hard because the more you're sitting there thinking about, oh, I have to actually aim this far over to the right to hit this shot. No, you got to snipe enough to the point where you it's it just comes natural to you. You're just trusting your instinct and you're taking the shot when you can. A lot of good snipers, if you notice, they snipe quick. A lot of their snipes are quick because they're not sitting there thinking too hard about what they have to do they literally just go with their instincts and react after after so many times of snipe shooting a sniper you learn to react rather than calculate now with that being said we're gonna actually cover step number eight which is calculation because of course you have to know how high up you have to aim on how far they are so I'm gonna skip to a different segment that I covered in another video you guys can actually learn a lot in this segment how high or how low you have to aim on a person depending on how far they are so guys this one as we all know in Call of Duty if you had the reticle on the person exactly lined up in the center of the lines you hit your shots no matter how far they are. But this one, there's fall off damage. So the, the only time you're gonna have the reticle exactly on the center point, exactly on the person, is if they're zero to 70 meters away. Now what this looks like is about this far. So this is probably about a 20 to 50 meter range. Anywhere between that range, you don't have to aim any higher. If you wanna go for a headshot, just put it right on his forehead and shoot. There's nothing you gotta do about that. Just shoot right on his head. <laughs> now right about here, if they're all the way down that far, this is about 100 to 150. This is is where you're actually gonna have to start aiming up a little bit so right around this area put it right on that second mark if you guys can see that little second mark right under the center that's where you want to put his head at it's right about there take your shot and it should drop perfectly right on him so this is a super long range shot as you can see he's 150 plus meters this is probably like 200 to 300 meters you still want to keep it kind of high but go right in between the second and the first one right about there Right on that second one, if you're going for a headshot, put it right about there, maybe a little bit lower. And if you shoot, the fall off should be just perfect. So as you guys saw, you don't have to aim too high. Like I said, in this picture right here, you never want to go below this area. You never want to aim higher than this area basically on the target. So you want to keep the person's body around this little circular area of your scopes at all times, you guys. You never want to go higher or lower than that unless we're talking about angles. And with that being said, step number nine is to snipe kids not moving. I know this sounds pretty basic, but a lot of people forget about this. Whenever somebody is completely still not moving or you see them just camping or hiding, don't pull out your AR and try and shoot them. Quickly switch to your sniper and take the sniper shot. One, because you can instantly kill them or two, you can get them so weak to the point where you just pull out your AR and one tap them. It's going to be a lot quicker to get the kill. And of course, speed is everything in this game. If you can move quicker than the other player, you're definitely going to have an advantage on that. 
And now covering step number 10, guys. The last step is practice. Practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. I know that this saying is probably the least thing everyone wants to hear because they want to instantly become good. But if you take these 10 steps and you practice these 10 steps, within a week, I promise you guys, you will become a better person at the game. I promise you. Just, just read the comments. I've helped out hundreds of people within the game on getting better. So if you guys want tips on how to be a better shotgun player or you need help on AR shot, I have have all types of different videos on this channel so if you guys want to subscribe to the channel and you're new go ahead and hit that subscribe button guys please give this video a thumbs up show some love show some support and again don't forget to enter in the giveaway and i will see you guys in tomorrow's video peace